Nice. All right, guys, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. Today's pretty cool. We're going to talk about effects, but I don't know if I've packed in too much. You know how little last time I packed in too less. So I'm still just going to take it slow and explain things as we go because each concept today is pretty important. We're going to actually talk about some physics, get excited. Um, but <laughs> she was like, no, chill, you didn't get the physics award either. Oh, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we start, as always, just want to check in with everyone around the room, starting with Arshia, just because you're the first on my screen. How are you going? Have you got Ableton as yet? I did. I downloaded the trial and I have the crack, so I got everything. Amazing. Oh, that's massive. PD's already got it. PD, have you figured out how to log in and get things to save and stuff? Finally, yes. Amazing. Okay, this is yeah. progress. Nice. No, I just fucking had to put in my email address, dude. That was all. Oh, thank God. <laughs> it's scary when you see that box because you think it's going to go to a billing details page. Yeah, I was like, damn, bro. Yeah. Uh, no, but I still don't know how to... Okay, so you, when you save a certain whatever file or whatever yeah. that you're working on, it gets saved onto your desktop like with all the little blocks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, if, you open, if you open up like Ableton once again, it doesn't like open up what you were working on previously. Okay, that's really weird. No, I definitely should do that. Let's, as, as usual, um, stay on like five minutes after the call and go through that. Because for the others, you shouldn't have that problem. Like it, it should just open up where, where you were. I thought you were going to ask, it's not saving as an MP3 or a WAV file. And I, I, would, I can show you how to do that as well later on. But anyway, yeah, Brown, stay on the line after and we'll, we'll talk about that. <clears throat> Did anyone, and, and Eric, I'm guessing, you know, you, you already told me you've got Ableton, so that's good. Anyone have a go warping Shez's guitar loop? that I sent around? No, all good. No worries. Um, maybe like on a day that you do, you can, you can catch up with that or really warp any piece of audio, but yeah, yeah the, 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 the big one that we also learned last time is add an element that you recorded. So did anyone have practice at least like, I don't know, tapping into their MacBook mic onto Ableton? Uh, yeah, no, all good. I'm just talking about the other track that I tried. What branch? I was just fucking around with the other track that I tried. Okay, that mashup that you that you yeah. spoke about. Yeah, yeah. Like, nice, man. I think as long as you get in there and you have some Ableton time, that's better than anything. Um, but hopefully you still kind of remember because now, like in the next in classes from this onwards, I'm going to just warp something or I'm just going to like record something because I've shown you how to do that. And, and if, if you ever want to do it yourself and you get stuck, you can always go back to those notes where it's all there. So um, hopefully it just works like that. Cool. And the last thing we learned is like how to use a loop to add a beat. So, you know, put those sample packs in the, on the left and drag them in. That one's really easy and really fun. Cool. So effects, one of my favorite parts of Ableton, the part that I started with, and then I worked backwards into music. I started with effects because I just think they're so cool. Inspirational quote for the day. It is indeed possible to make a diamond out of a turd. Shay, 2020. That's my personal one. Um, because... The story here is um, I used to design sound for a small theater company that my friend and I co-founded in high school. And he was like, be the sound designer. I didn't know how to do anything. I would record the most boring sounds, whether it's a clap or a kick drum or whatever, and just add in so many effects that something comes out of the, at the other end. And it just sounds cool because you just fuck around until things sound right or things sound wrong, right? So really the fun thing about effects is it brings out that child in you, that experimental a uh, kid who just wants like, touch all the buttons, see what happens. I don't understand what's happening. It's okay. You're learning, you know? Um, what's this? Okay. This is a reminder for me to change my Ableton output to Zoom. One second. Done. All right. Back, back to this. So where do effects fit in? So the logical chain of where effects fit in. So this is kind of like the narrative of what we've done so far, right? You now know how to warp a piece of audio whether it's your own audio, or, I mean, an existing song or something that you've recorded, okay? You then know how to put it in and like chop it around, slice and dice it, reverse it, all that sort of stuff with those keyboard shortcuts and commands I've shown you. Great. We then also know how to add a simple beat so you can drag from a loop library or something. So that's pretty much enough to arrange a mashup or arrange the programming of a DJ set, right? So that's not performing it live, that's like programming it, as I've shown you, like a, like a film edit almost. Um, so that's pretty good, but how do you make it sound dope as in like, okay, cool. The beat came in, but I wanted to sound like it's in a different space or I wanted to sound like it's delaying and it's all over the place. Or I just wanted to sound distorted and crazy as shit. So that's like the logical world of where effects fit in. 
um, and that's how it's used in the more traditional sense. But it can also be used experimentally. And this is for if you have a weirdo in you, which if you dig deep, everyone has one. If you have a piece of audio, whether it's a field recording, traffic, a drum hit, a simple guitar loop, whatever it is, and even if it's boring to start with, how do you transform it into something completely otherworldly? Like it sounds like not, not even recognizable from the source audio. Um, and yeah, that's why effects can be used in a really experimental way. So today I'm going to teach you a, a very small number of effects because there's a lot of effects, but I'm going to teach you, I'm going to dive deep into two main ones. One is called an equalizer and one is called a compressor. So bread and butter for Eric over here who would be using these like every day at work. Um, but the important thing, I think instead of just showing you and you hearing, oh, this is what an EQ does is I am going to geek out a little bit about what it's actually doing. Um, because I think it's fascinating. You'll understand sound at a deeper level. And because then when you're using it, you'll actually know what's happening a little bit more. So now an actual inspirational quote, not, not the, not the polish it turned into a diamond one is going back to this thing that we've said earlier, you know, art is how you decorate space. And if you go one level deeper on that, like what are artists decorating a canvas or whatever with? They're decorating it with paint or with charcoal or whatever. So music is the art of decorating time. But what is the paint for musicians? Sorry, guys. I swear I wasn't high when I wrote this. But, you know, just following this analogy, like what do musicians paint with? It's actually frequencies. So the first concept I'm going to show you is something called the frequency spectrum. Pranch has done a bit of this in the DJ 101 thing. And after showing you the frequency spectrum, I'm going to teach you filtering effects. So effects like equalizers and auto filters, et cetera, and show you what they do. But first to understand, you know, when filtering effects filter out or filter in frequencies, you need to first deeply understand what are frequencies. So a little bit of physics to start your morning, if you guys are in Europe and at night for you, Prayanj, is that is actually how sound works because that's where frequency comes in. So this is how sound works. All right something vibrates. So classic example, tuning fork. And what it does is it, it causes like movement in the air particles around it. If you look deeper in the movement and the air particles around it, you'll see that it's actually causing compressions where air particles are like together and rarefactions where air particles are not together. And then they come and go, come and go at an even rate. Okay. This therefore creates a wave and we hear that wave as sound. So that's actually what we're hearing is air pressure at compressing and rarefying at different speeds is comes through to us as sound. So what is this graph actually showing? Just imagine where it's the peak compression of or all the air particles mush together. Imagine that's the peak of the waveform. I mean, it is. And wherever it's rarefied, like less space, that's the trough of the waveform. Okay. Are you with me so far? Nice. I know you're thinking, where are you going with this? Why are we being so big bang theory? But it does, it does loop back really well, I think. So the distance between in the sound wave, right? And now each body will make a different sound. So if you have a wine glass and a different size wine glass and you ting them both, they'll make different pitches of ting. Why? Because the distance between the peak over here, peak to peak or trough to trough, however you want to measure it, that's called the wavelength of that sound, right? And different sounds have different wavelengths. So the smaller the wine glass, the shorter the wavelength that it makes and therefore the higher the pitch. Okay. So there's a wave, there's a wavelength, different sounds make different wavelengths, shorter wavelengths are higher pitch, longer wavelengths are lower in pitch. So bassy. All right. With me so far. So obviously then scientists were like, all right. And sound people were like, we need a unit to measure how many wavelengths finish per unit time. Let me just quit fucking Facebook. Um, so how many wavelengths actually finish in a unit of time? Because that's how you can then quantify, okay, this sound is this pitch or this sound is that pitch, right? So then they made a unit to measure that. So Eric, this is not for you, but Arshia or Pranj, do you want to have a stab at what that unit is called? Hertz. Nice. All right. Here we go. Someone's hanging out with the sound engineer. So it's called Hertz or HZ for short. I know Arshia got that on your own merit. Okay. Don't get mad at me. Um, so it's called Hertz. Now, what does one Hertz actually mean? It's quite simple. Once you get this concept, one Hertz means that one cycle, which means peak to peak has completed in one second. That's it. Okay. So when I'm saying 50 Hertz, now, you know, I mean a sound that has 50 cycles 
in one wavelength. So the word frequency, therefore, is the number of cycles, the frequency of the cycles in one second. That's what a frequency is. Okay. So Prayansh, trick question for you. That's one hertz. Can you tell us, will we be able to hear that sound as humans? Can we hear one hertz? Yes, I not. You think not? Nice. Do you recall, and all good if you don't, the, the pub trivia I threw into the DJ class. What is the human range of hearing? What hertz range can we actually hear? Don't remember, bro. Okay, bro. I don't expect you. It's fine. I'd be, I'd be freaking impressed if you did. But the human range of hearing is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. That's what we're born with. And then when we die, it actually shrinks, which is sad. But um, that, that's what it is, okay? So we can't hear one hertz, but we can hear 20 hertz. That's really bassy notes. And the high notes are 20,000 hertz. So now, please put your headphones on because I'm so excited about this. We're going to do a frequency sweep together. So that means you're going to, instead of me saying low sounds are bo and high sounds are da, it's like I'm not, I'm not a synthesizer. I'm not as clean as that, right? So I want you to actually hear what low to high frequency sound like and I'm going to make an off a synthesizer, do the sweep for you. All right. Um, okay. Yeah, branch getting his headphones on in the meantime, just keep a hand on your volume bar in case some frequencies are really loud for you. They play at a constant level, but some frequencies sound louder to humans. I'll explain why in a second. Cool. First, I just want to make sure you all can hear this. Okay. So I'm going to just play you some sound. Um, Arsha, can you give me a nod? If you hear this, all right. Yep. Cool. Everyone can hear audio. It's comfortable level. It's not too loud, not too soft. Nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you all of the frequencies. So this is a synthesizer. It's going to start at like 20 Hertz pretty much like as low as you can. And then it's going to go all the way up to the highest range. And what I want you to see while that sound is happening is I want you to like, if I zoom, this is the sound as it plays. All right. And like the waveform, you'll see that the waveform starts with bigger wavelengths because it's bass notes. And then you're going to see it's going to get higher and higher. So that's what you're going to look at over here. And at the same time over here is an equalizer. It's going to show you the note going up in pitch. And these numbers here, hundred, one K, 10 K. You can see my Ableton, right? Oh shit. Nice. I'm so glad I checked. All right, over here, right? Just, this is the sound that's going to be playing in this channel. And I'm going to zoom in so you can, can you see like wavelengths? Now you know what I'm talking about, distance between wavelengths, right? It's going to start as pretty long wavelengths because we're going to start with bass and it's going to end really short. Um, and so you're, I want you to see that while you hear this sound I'm going to play you, which is a frequency sweep. And also over here, down here, can you see this equalizer, this graph thing? That's going to show you the sound played on an equalizer. So you're going to see the note go up in pitch. So we are hundred means it's at a hundred Hertz. One K means it's at one K Hertz. 10 K means 10,000 Hertz. So I'm going to shut up. I'm just going to play it. Keep it, keep a hand on your volume bar in case some frequencies are too loud. Start with it a bit louder because bass is softer to humans. And then when it goes higher, you'll want to turn it down because it sounds pretty annoying. All right, let's start. Hear things? Nice. Look at the wavelengths. Are they getting shorter and shorter as we go up in frequency? has the highest hearing range. Or best headphones. <laughs> Is something still playing? Because I can't hear anymore. <laughs> you, no, no, you can't hear it anymore. But you could hear a tone going up, right? Yeah, I did. But then, I mean, does it just continue past the range of human hearing? Or am I like... It continues hearing? past the range of our hearing as mid -t as mid-20s. So oh, okay. and after kids about six, can hear more. sorry, is it true that kids can hear higher frequencies? Kids can hear higher. Kids are born with about twenty to twenty thousand, and then every time we go to a nightclub and we come out, we hear ringing. 
that ringing you're hearing, that frequency is the frequency you're slowly losing, which is why it's so important to wear your plugs in loud environments. But I don't I want do to be Mr. Safety. Huh? I do wear your plugs. You do? Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so did you, now you understand, I think, the concept of, of pitch and frequency, right? So, it, so frequency is basically what is, you know, frequency and pitch are the same thing. Frequency counts the number of cycles that complete in a second. And pitch is just how we describe, oh, it's going up in pitch. It's going up in frequency. It's the same thing. Pitch is just how we describe it in audio. Okay. So with that, um, firstly, like how, how was that experience? Like Arsha, did you feel any parts were louder or softer? Any parts got annoying? I did. I did have to turn down the volume quite a bit. At yeah. Some point and then I had to stay down. But then I had to turn it up again at the end. I so see. Okay. Nice. Which did you, did, I did you like notice you know, which range you turned it down in? Uh, yeah, I think it was just before the monkey. I see. Okay, yep, cool. Nice. And then I kind of like, kept it going a lot to the end. Okay. Branch, any interesting, like, how was that frequency sweep kind of experience for you? Like, any interesting observations? No, I think just towards the end, dude. I just had to turn it down a bit. Fair enough. That's cool. pretty much it. So, cool trivia while we're here. Humans can hear this range. If you can see my cursor, where I'm pointing between 1K and 10K, we can hear that range louder than any other range. Any guesses why? Think to survival, Charles Darwin. Because that's where the human voice is and we're designed to hear other people's voices. So that's why we can hear other people's voices louder than we can hear unwanted noises. We have like an inbuilt filter in us. Cool. So as you can see, this waveform is completely level. It didn't turn up in loudness at all. What you heard was actually frequencies that we hear softer, bass and stuff. And then um, when it comes to human range, it sounds really loud to us because we're accustomed, we're, we're designed to hear that louder than anything else. Cool. So next time you wanna, I don't know, geek out with a sound engineer, you can have that chat. <laughs> um, all right, sweet. The other thing is, the reason I chose that sound, the sound you heard is called a sine wave. Sine wave is what we say is maybe like the, the purest sound that, one, that can be made because it only plays the one tone. If you looked at the EQ, it was one mountain that moved, not even a mountain, like a pole that moved from left to right. If you play anything else, there'll be, even if you play this, the specific note C, there'll be C and there'll be a few notes above that as well. They're called harmonics. That's what makes each instrument get its sound. It's specific proportion of harmonics and um, overtones as they're called, okay? Anyway, enough geeking out in physics. I think you'll generally get this concept that frequent of what is a frequency. So what did we look at over here? This is an equalizer. I'm gonna show you how to drag it on a track and how to use it for cool stuff in a second. But just for a sec, like you've understood that this bottom range is frequency, right? So the higher it goes to the right, the higher the frequency or the pitch, and the lower it is, bass, basically, lower, lower notes. What is the y-axis, though? What was that representing? It's a simple one. No, it's just volume, okay? So this is just how loud it is. So that's why the, the pole stayed the same height throughout, because it was the same level, it was the same volume, okay? So... Anyway, we don't naturally look at a sine wave through an EQ like that. Normally, if you see an EQ, you if you put it on a track, this is what a finished track looks like. I think you'd appreciate it differently now because um, you, you understand what frequencies are. So now if you look at this graph, this is what music looks like. Organized frequencies. Now when the kick comes in, look at what happened on the left. That's the kick, right? Because the kick is in the lower bassy range. And then your hi-hats are on the right, okay? So this is the first effect I wanna show you today. It's called an equalizer. Um, initially, maybe not the most exciting effect off the bat, but it's really important to understand what an equalizer does and is um, because, it's, because it leads you to the world of like filtering effects, which I'll show you in a sec. Now in this equalizer, it comes with a few parameters that I'm going to show you. So if you click any of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you'll see it's called EQ eight because it has eight different parameters. You can choose over here whether to have something that like if the shape, can you see the shape is like on the left like this, like a cut that obviously means it's going to cut out anything on the left of that line. Now, as we know, on the left is base and on the right 
is highs. Okay. So if I apply that and if I, um, if I move this one, it's very intuitive. I just grab it and move it. Okay. I'm not like moving a knob or something. I'm just grabbing it and moving it. Listen to what happens to the sound, especially when the kick comes in. So now I'll keep it as it is. Now I'm going to slightly move it up. No more kick drum. Can you hear that? And the higher I go, now it's only the highs. Okay. So this is called a, um, well, a high pass filter because it only allows highs to pass through. Alternatively described as a low cut filter because it cuts the lows. On the other end, we have the opposite, a low pass filter or a high cut filter. Okay. So I'm going to bring it down. You hear that sound to sound muffled. Okay. And you can hear the kick. It's nice and warm and round. And when I open it up, Sounds like you're entering a nightclub. Because when a nightclub door opens, that's what happens. It, it's it, the lows pass through because it has a longer wavelength. It survives for longer. And then the highs, the highs die. And then when the door opens, you start, you, you hear a filter open. Basically the door acts as a filter. Oh. Um, sweet. So that's a little bit about EQ. I'm going to show you how to actually use that in a creative sense in a second by showing you like a transition. But I first want to show you another mode over here, just so you can really get the hang of training your ear about what frequency lies on which part of that graph. Now, Branch, I know you might be thinking if you're just here for DJ sets and mashups, do you need this? Yes, because this is what makes like if you're programming a transition or programming a mashup, this is what can make things sound really polished and smooth. Um, and then later, obviously in the production world, it's used a lot. Okay. So the audition mode is this headphone button icon over here. It's one of the coolest parts of, of, of this equalizer because now I can grab any parameter. Hey, hot tip, this bell icon, this, I, I'm, I'm not going to explain the other parameters to you. You can just play with them on your own time. They're very self-explanatory, but yeah, this bell icon is a handy one because it's just, it pulls one frequency up or down. Okay. So if you have audition mode and you hold the number four, you'll actually hear just that frequency range. Yeah, bass. It doesn't like bass, right? So that's, that's audition mode. Cool. So I'm showing you that just because I think later on afterwards, if you, if you catch up on your previous stuff and then you're playing with effects, it's really cool to bring out the EQ, do a low cut pass, a high cut pass, um, you know, put on headphone mode and listen. Okay. Also hot tip. If you can't see when you're playing it back and you can't see the, the waves behind it, like it was on my screen, this option puts on the spectrum. It, it actually enables the spectrum behind the EQ, which is really cool. A lot of DAWs EQs, they don't do that. You got to just mix by ear, which is cool. But if there's a visual cue, why not? Right? Sweet. So yeah, with that, I'm going to show you, um, a simple transition about how that would be helpful. Well, actually, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you another, another effect called the auto filter, which now that you understand the EQ eight will make a lot of sense. This is an auto filter. As you can see, it looks like a baby version of an EQ. You see these lines, they're kind of similar. All right. So an auto filter and you'll see these, these buttons, same thing. High, you know, this is a high pass, low pass, um, and then a, a band pass, but don't worry about that for now. For now, just, just play with these two. Right. So same thing. I can just, Okay. So, sorry, that was the second track coming in. So I'm going to show you a very simple transition. Let's say this song is playing. Okay. And you're, you're, let's say you're programming a DJ set on Ableton. Arshia, I know you want to perform DJ sets on Ableton. So step one is to be able to actually at least understand these effects and program it in Ableton. Then performing it is easy. It's transferable. So let's just hear this track. No effects. This is not doing anything. Okay. It just kind of keeps playing and then kind of phases out, right? So this other song, let's say that I want to transition into um, Oliver Koletsky remix, sounds like this. Okay. Can you hear my voice over the music okay? Is it a decent mix? Yeah, all right, cool. Now, um, obviously I've warped them both in the same BPM. I found a section of Oliver Koletsky's track just after the intro where the bass comes in, you know, for this example. 
So I've done all that behind the scenes, but now I want to mix these two songs. So this is what I showed you in first class when I did a simple DJ transition. And I'll show you how filters come in handy over here. Now I could just slam both of them in, all right, like this. Sorry. All right, and they're transitioning, no problem. But A, it's a bit busy. Um, it's just a bit sudden, right? There's no, like, take me out to dinner first. Like, you just fucking slammed it in, right? So, um, this is where a, a transition would come in. Uh, I mean, using, using a filter. So, uh, I'll explain that after. Okay, so, so here's what I would do. I can hear that this song has a lot of bass. And it's a pretty cool bass, okay? And this song, you know, let's say I want to swap out the bass of this for the bass of that. I now know how to do that because I know how to use a filter. So on the first track, what I've done, so imagine there's nothing on it, okay? What I do is on the left, I, I just take, I go to audio effects, I type in auto for auto filter, I could just type in filter as well. And because this track's already selected, I can just double click it and it'll pop up here. Or if I'm not that confident yet, I can just drag it onto bumper like this, okay? And if you're ever hovering on the view of this and you're like, where's that auto filter gone? There's two different views. This is the clip view. This is when you double click the clip. And if you double click the track, that's called the device view. So these are devices on the track. So earlier it's empty, there's nothing on it. Just ignore this thing over here. Um, and then now it has a filter on it, okay? So now that I have a filter here, what do I wanna do? Okay, I know that I wanna cut out the base of this track starting over here because I want the base of Oliver Kaletsky to come in. So I'm gonna choose this one, low cut. And I'm going to speed it up because you'll experiment with home of where's the sweet spot. But I know it's around 100 hertz. I want to start cutting over there because that's where like bass and kick drums and stuff lie. So I'm going to say to Ableton to like, I can, I've shown you automation before with volume. I'm just going to extend on that knowledge by showing you I'm automating a parameter here, which is frequency. I'm going to click the parameter of frequency because that's what I want to automate, right? Right click, show automation in new lane. Now you'll see under bumper, there's this new lane, but this new lane has, doesn't actually have audio. It just has this red line. Um, it can be hard to see, but this is the red line over here. Okay. So, so far I want the, I want the auto filter to be at nothing is happening. And right over here where I want this song to come in, I want to put it up just a tad over there. And then from there until the rest of the song, I want the bass to slowly suck out. And so I'll just, Put it up like that. So now even like let, I'm turning off fire so that yellow button is off. You're just hearing bumper. Listen to what happens and watch the auto filter being automated. You hear that? Subtle, bass disappeared. And slowly, if I fast forward, see the auto filter is moving up and up by itself. No hands. Cool, right? So now, Let's think of it from a frequency point of view, what's actually happening. I want to show you, okay? So if you look at the EQ while this is happening, there's bass. Now I've put the EQ after the auto filter. So whatever the auto filter is doing and the resulting signal, the EQ will visualize, all right? So look at that. You see the bass disappeared there? And now look, as it continues to suck out, going up, that's going to keep getting more to the right, i.e. cutting the lows. So obviously then the spectrum, the frequency spectrum over here is missing something. It's missing the low end. That's why I'm going to replace that low end with the low end of fire, this song over here. Okay. So I'm going to do the exact opposite maneuver, an auto filter with a low pass, not a low cut. I'm just going to pause and check in. Has, have, have I lost anyone? Or are you with me so far on what I'm doing? Cool. With me? Nice. Um, so this EQ is not doing anything because the line is flat and EQ is only doing anything if the line is munted or affected, right? So, um, again, auto filter, I've selected low pass cause I know I want the low frequencies which sit on the left to come in and I move this knob to around a hundred because that's around where I cut the other one. Okay. So now if I just listen to fire, what does it sound like? I don't know if your headphones are good enough to pick this up, but can you hear that? You can, nice, awesome. And obviously you can hear it open up. So 
because the other song is going to end over there, I might as well just build the same slope. So show automation in new lane. That makes it easy for me to find this dot, set it at 100 to start with. And then I can see over here something's happening in the track. Like there's a break and then it really comes in. So by that point, I want it to fully be in so that it's not muffled by the time it's like, fuck yeah, the drop or whatever you want to call it, right? So now over here, you can see we have a slope going up in bumper, but because it's a high pass filter, it's cutting out the lows and the opposite's happening over here. I have a low pass filter, right? So this shape, and again, the slope is going up, but it's, it's bringing in the highs rather than the opposite of what's happening up there. So now if I play them together, Look on the bottom right, what's happening in the EQ. The highs are slowly coming in as the low of this disappears. Right? Bit of a smoother transition, bit more movement, holding some things back by the time it's in. Not the song, okay? Very simple transition super easy um, and not perfect. There's more we could do to make it better, but that's a little concept of EQ filtering. And how that, ooh, stop, stop it. Sorry, sometimes I talk to Ableton. Um, that's, that's a little example of how it comes together. Any questions on EQ or auto filter? Yes, Arsha. I had a question. Um, I'm not sure if you covered this. I may have lost it and all of that information, but how do you know uh, which track your filter, what if you want to put a filter on both the tracks? Like, how do you know which one? To yes, nice. Okay, good question. So to do that, you double click the track. And when you double click the track, it pulls up the device view, i.e. this view, the bottom left, the, the bottom half of the screen um, of that track. So it shows you the effects on that track. And if I double click this one, and shows me the effects on this one. Does that answer the question? Yeah, okay, cool. I wasn't sure if I got that right. Nice. Um, I don't know how intense that was and whether to go on teaching another less complicated concept. Do you feel okay to proceed or do you feel like you want to digest that for a bit and we should do some more fun stuff instead? Proceed, compresses. I'm okay to go ahead. Okay to go ahead? All right, cool. So next we're gonna very simply talk about a concept called compressors and compression. Now, Eric is a professional sound engineer and he would be using this tool every day and he might murder me for how simplified I'm gonna make this example. I mean, a definition of what a compressor does. So I'm gonna give you the geeky explanation first and then the, <laughs> he's watching, and, and then the, the English version. But really you guys know what it does because you know this word called normalizing. I know you know it from Spotify, iTunes. Do you want the level of every track to be the same, right? That's, that's somewhat what a compressor is doing. So let's talk about it. So a new concept, the concept is called dynamics. Okay. So there's a term in audio called dynamic range. Now we're talking about volume, by the way, we're not talking about pitch or EQ or frequencies at all. It's a totally different concept. So volume, how loud is something? How soft is something? We're all familiar with that because we all have, have used remote controls in our life, right? And a dynamic range describes, it's very simple, the difference between the loudest sound and the softest sound in a piece of audio. Okay, so to show you that as an example, I'm gonna show you a very simple drum loop that is uncompressed, i.e. a raw recording. So I'm gonna play it for you. Now look at the waveform. Do you notice this quality about it? That there are highs and lows. So this first hit is louder in volume than the second hit. Simple enough to understand, right? So therefore that is the dynamic range of that piece of audio. It's quite dynamic, you would describe, okay? Now, there's an effect called a compressor, sometimes known as the miracle of sound. It's pretty amazing. What it does is it, in geeky terms, it reduces the dynamic range. So instead of that difference being so big, it would compress that difference so that it's more of a, it's a shorter difference. 
And in English, what it does is it just makes the loud sounds softer so that everything is a similar volume. Okay. So I want to, I want you to hear what a compressor does. It's not very, if you're new to compression, you will, you'll be, you might think it's just sounding louder. Okay. So, um, I'm going to talk you through it while I do it. So this is a compressor again, to pull up any effect. These are your audio effects. There's actually not that many. Um, I mean, there's a few, but there's not like an overwhelming amount. So hopefully if you want to play around, you're not too intimidated, but yeah, you go to audio effects, you type in compressor and you drag it in just like I did an EQ. Okay. Then there's a few effects here. I'm not going to talk about them in detail, but like a threshold is at what point do you want the loud sounds to start reducing in volume? This GR over here stands for gain reduction. So how much of the loud sound have we reduced? That's it. That's all it's doing. And if you hear it, you'll see it's not that dramatic. Listen. Versus no, sorry, let me turn makeup off and, and play that again. Makeup is a term in audio. It's not like me with my mascara. So just the audio with a compressor. It sounds softer, right? Because the compressor makes loud sound softer. So you're not wrong. Like the loud sounds are sounding softer. But if you turn on this makeup button, what it does is it makes up for the volume that it lost and therefore places one louder, consistently louder sound. Now you may think, okay, interesting. I don't know why this is useful. I'm going to show you in a sec. I'm just going to visualize what it does for you before I move on. So this, I've recorded it beforehand, just to save time, is the same audio as above, except after a compressor. So if I play it, right? But if you look at the waveform, can you see that the dynamic range has reduced? The peak of the first is pretty much as loud as the peak over here. Can you see that? Like, so this first waveform on top, if you zoom out, it's dynamic. It has silences. It has loud bits. The second waveform seems more like we would say a brick wall, like, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a line. So that's what a compressor is doing. So why did I tell you that? Like, what do we do with that? It's because the combination of an EQ, which you've just learned and a compressor are super handy not just for music, but also like in life. Like I'm telling you, I'm so many times when people have said, I need to record a piece of audio for a university project or a voiceover for a video or whatever. EQ compressor, just those two effects alone can make your vocal sound so much better. Okay. Because I've shown you that on a drum loop. Now imagine in a voice, there's naturally parts from softer, parts from louder in milliseconds. A compressor just brings all that together and it just makes things sound sexy. I can't describe it. And so I'm going to show you in a second. Also, the, it has the same effect on any recording, like a guitar, like a guitar sound. Um, and the other cool thing it does is like EQ especially can clean up the background noise in a recording. So if you're ever making a film, edit, promotional video, perhaps you're going to be a big club promoter one day and you've recorded some audio at the festival pre-show, but there's a lot of like the hum of the generator. Well, you'll know, you'll see on an EQ that the hum of the generator is at hundred Hertz and you'll cut that out and suddenly your sound is significantly better. So you've learned two skills today when put together can be really handy. So I'm going to show you that in a very embarrassing <laughs> voiceover that I recorded at home. I wanted to record another one, but the dog started barking and I was like, fuck, I have to commit now. So this is my vocal recording through my microphone, like the podcast mic that I own. But with no EQ compressor, they're grayed out because their on button is off. That's the on button on the top left. So this is just the um, vocal raw. Mm, nothing like a cold UB export on a warm Bangalore day. <laughs> For folks following at home, UB export is like the typical Bangalore beer. It's so good. That's the best thing I've heard all morning. Mate, wait for it with an EQ and a compressor. <laughs> so now EQ. So you might see this EQ as a funny shape. I call it the make Divi sound sexy shape. I've been using the same shape on my voice for two years when I ran the Uber podcast. First thing I'm doing, if you look, is I'm boosting my bass frequency a bit. Actually, I'll put off all the parameters so you can hear each thing happen on its, on its own, okay? So it's very subtle changes, but together they add up, trust me. So first, vocal. Mm, nothing like a cold. Okay, with the bass boost. So a little bass boost here. Mm, nothing like a cold UBX. Very subtle, okay? Then this parameter here four. I, you know how I showed you that's the human range where we can hear people's voices. It's that's why I'm boosting that. That actually makes things more 
Arsha, you love this. It's a complex word. It makes things more intelligible, which is the audio word for legible, right? Like you're able to tell what the person is trying to say. So we hear that same thing again. Mm, nothing like a gold UB export on a warm bank. Without? Nothing like a gold UB export on a warm It's a bit muffled. So with it undoes the muffling, okay? And this third one is to remove my Punjabi nasal part of my frequency range, which I definitely have a, have a fucking heap of. So normal. Mm, nothing like a gold. Without Punjabi nasal range. Nothing like a gold UB export on a warm Bangalore day. So removing frequencies can actually have quite a big impact. Now I add a compressor. Okay, so I showed you what that does. It just makes the loud sounds in this softer and pulls up the overall gain. So now if I listen again. Mm, nothing like a gold UB export on a warm Bangalore day. Like even that day, like the little granules, like enhances each one. So I know you guys are really craving a beer right now. So I am going to create, I'm going to finish that satisfaction by, with some beer sounds at the end of the class. But that's the EQ and compressor duo together. And these are, these are the use cases. Make your vocals sound better. Make any recording, like a guitar sound better. Clean up background noise in a recording. Okay. Um, yeah, cool. So far, so good. Haven't, no one's like, boof, this is too much. That's good. So a bit of fun stuff now, because we've like gone pretty hardcore on the theory pretty, pretty early in the morning for you all and, and late for you, Prayansh. Um, just a fun one, reverb. Okay, this is a, an ex I think uh, an effect that everyone just knows by hearing it, uh, as in like this, the word, um, obviously stands for reverberations and is not exactly the same as echo, but it's like the, uh, the, the sound that the space makes when you speak into it. Okay, so I'm gonna, following the beer theme, sorry about the noise outside, I wish I could EQ them out, but I can't. And now you can get jokes like that, which is great. So I'm just gonna show you the sound of a can opening by itself, no reverb. Cool. So that's the sound of a beer can. Now with reverb, now again, how did I add the reverb? You know, audio effects, you betcha type in reverb. There's, you bet there's a reverb, drag it in. Now there's some parameters here. I'm not going to explain what they are because I want you to experiment and play around. But that same can opening sound with reverb puts it in a space. Listen to it now. And then obviously when that sexy voice comes in saying, mm, nothing like a UV expert, it's a, it's a little bit more cohesive with that because it puts you in the mood. So you hear that effect a lot in ads, the, you know, okay. But it can also be used in transitions. So if I grab that reverb, go back to that transition we had with Rampa and Oliver Koletsky, God bless their souls for making such beautiful music. I can drag a reverb, put it in, um, what I'm going to do is, you know, the one thing to know in, in effects is the dry wet is how much of the effect do you want? That's one of the main parameters I'll tell you. The rest I want you to figure out. Some are self-explanatory like decay time. How long will it decay for? How many seconds? Okay. So I'm going to, yeah, add some automation. So dry wet, start with zero reverb, but then add reverb. What is that going to sound like? I don't know. Um, it's going to add some, some tension, some excitement, I feel. And I'm also going to increase the decay time so that it starts to go up and over here it, it, it goes up in decay and I'm going to show you why in a sec. So that same transition without reverb. Okay. And obviously the, the actual transition. Okay. Not bad, but with reverb, right? It's going to add, as you can see, this dry wet. Can you see that line going up? That's my reverb dry wet. This will show you what, what is the red line signifying. So now listen to it. Bit of space. Okay. So if you, if you miss that, what actually happened in the background is that DK time, because I turned it up or before that last snare, it caught that and it made a reverb tail out of it. So that just, if I mix it better and louder or whatever, it just makes the transition sound a lot smoother. Right? It's like something is ending. So yeah, that's, that's reverb. Another really fun one is delay. So this is, this is just me mucking around for you, but I'm not going to show you every Ableton effect. There's too many. Um, I want you to, to figure it out after. 
I'm just showing you some that really stand out and like my personal faves. Delay is cool because it's quantized. What I mean by quantized, the word quantized means in sync with the grid. Okay. As you know, with warping, we've already put songs on the grid. Now delay will delay the sounds, but instead of the sound coming back to you at random times, it'll come back to you in um, 16th notes. And over here you can choose like what resolution. Don't worry so much. What does this number mean? Just fuck around. I'm telling you, that's the way to go. So let's listen. Okay, can you hear the delay? Okay. It doesn't sound that great on, on, on that right now, but let we can change, you know, the, the, this means on the left, it's going to come back every two 16th beats and on the right, it's come back every four 16th beats. Especially Asha, if you want to do performance DJing, get, grabbing a delay, putting it on, um, I'm going to show you later something called a return track where it's another way of adding an effect and then having a, having a, a knob mapped to a MIDI controller in front of you. Super easy way to add some movement and excitement, right? So, So that's delay. Now, any questions on reverb and delay before I show you the last two things and wrap up? No, nope, pretty good. I hope you're like, I don't know, getting a bit pumped to like put some tracks in and have fun, having fun, um, this thing, what's it called? Just playing around with them, uh, adding effects and experimenting with them. What else do I want to show you? I wanted to show you. Yeah, so now I'm going to show you two experimental effects. These are effects which may seem a little bit out of your grasp initially because the other ones I've shown you, EQ compressor, reverb, delay, they're your, your simple ones, your go-tos, and they're great, don't get me wrong. But at the end of every class, I'm trying to show off a little bit and trying to show you a little bit about what you, if you keep going with Ableton, what you can achieve and what you can strive for because these last two effects uh, can be a little bit trickier to understand initially. Resonator, the one I'm going to show you now, which is... Oh my God, I've used it in everything. It's so good. Um, it is very simple actually to use. So you, you can still play with it. What it does is it takes any sound coming in. So, you know, in the, in the copy of the invite, I don't know if you noticed, I said turn traffic into music. So if you, hear, this is the sound of just traffic. in Sweden, if anyone was curious. So I've added a compressor that what that does, as you know, is it just makes the loud sound softer so that it's not like car, nothing. It's like car and something, okay? So I've added a compressor there. Now with the resonator, watch what it does. If I, um, yeah, if I just put the resonator on, it comes like this. And by default, it'll do nothing because the dry wet is set to zero. But if I set the dry wet up, what it's doing is it's taking the input signal and it's turning it into a sound. And then if a car drives by, this sound will, I can't explain it, just hear it. Can you hear that little string? So now, when a car goes by, that string will get louder and brighter. Okay? Not that exciting just yet, but if you know a little bit of um, music theory, you can add in more resonators here. So this is stuff you learn later. I'm not gonna explain how this works now, but suddenly I'm playing a chord. That's a C minor. And if I add reverb. And by the way, guys, look out for these cues because I've told you how frequencies work, which means you understand how half of these effects work now. You see these shapes? You know what those shapes mean? That means low pass. That means high pass or low cut, band fast and notch. Don't worry about them right now, but the first two, right? So this means the sound coming in, right now I'm saying don't low pass it at all, but I could. Low pass. I could automate that to open over some time. That could be some cool way to make some space, spacey music, or it could be a bed behind a track, reverb, and then I've added delay. Okay, so that's a really fun effect to play with. Even if you don't know why these numbers are a C minor, I don't expect you to, it's fine. Just go in there and type in some random numbers. Um, seven and 12 usually sound good, fun hint. Um, and yeah, just, just have, some, have some fun with that. Or put it on, be like, I don't know what's happening. Turn it off, 
<laughs> okay, that's fine as well. And the last effect I'm going to show you is called a vocoder. So this is how to make your voice sound like Daft Punk. This is what they use. So I love vocoders. It's something I'm still learning. Beat Lab is teaching me a lot. Very grateful. Um, this is not the perfect vocoder just yet, but my original voice in this is... Stare so deep into the depths of your phone, you look up and around and you realize you're alone. Stare so deep into the depths of... Okay, not that great. And you can hear there's a bit of delays and compression and all that sort of stuff happening. When I turn on vocoder... And then if I layer it, so now it's two vocoders. Cool. Also a sneak peek into a track I'm working on. But um yeah that's that's today i'm just gonna wrap it up now so hang on let's get that back up resonator vocoder yeah so in terms of what to do from here like i know this may have seemed overwhelming this class is a bit concerned i may have packed in too much but if you've understood the frequency spectrum or if you maybe you're just at the edge of understanding it watch the recording again same with dynamics it makes loud sounds softer just remember that okay but for homework literally just drag in a piece of audio into ableton whether it's you making music with loops, no problem with that when you're starting, okay? Or a vocal gu or a guitar recording that you did um, for Shez, um, if he's watching, or mashing up an existing song like Pranch is working on, or even just a DJ transition, right? Then drag in that piece of audio and then just dr put on each, every effect. I know it sounds like a lot, but just drag, the, drag it on, listen to it, delete it, okay? Listen to what each effect does. I don't know why Eric is shirtless, but that's, that's a vibe. <laughs> Add add effects till the point that if, if you turn off the effects, it's going to sound like a completely different piece of work. So what I'm trying to say is transform your audio using effects so that at the end of when you're done, it sounds like something totally new and it doesn't need to sound good initially. Just, just have fun. Just mess around. Sweet. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that was very informative. That was a bit, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I think that was a lot of things all at okay. once. Okay, too much. But like it was, it was super interesting that I was, and I was like getting answers to a lot of questions I've had, but at the same time, oh. like, I don't know. Am I going to practice all these things in this next week? I'm going to try to for real, yeah. but I don't yeah. know if I will, I will <laughs> actually get it. If nothing, <laughs> put on an EQ into any sound, just move the EQ around and get your ears used to what, what it's doing, what are the different frequencies cutting off at, noticing when low goes away or high goes away. Just, just that is fine, all right? Yeah. It's one of those ones where if you play with it and you listen to other examples, you'll notice what other people are doing as well. Like you don't really have the mindset for it at the moment because you don't know what the tool's doing, but until you play with it and things like that, like you'll, you'll start to yeah. clue up on it. And then, yeah, it's, it's actually a lot, it's, it's a lot less daunting than it seems. Yeah. I don't know if I went ham on the whole frequency wavelength cycles thing. Um, I w yeah, maybe, I don't know if that was a bit confusing. You don't actually need to know any of that. It's just, I thought it was a good way to understand why is it called frequency? What's actually happening? You know, how does sound work in the world around you? But the more you play with it, as, as Eric said, like you'll just, you'll get a hang of it. I, do, I really do appreciate yeah. like the history stuff. So like the, all the extra information, I think oh, you think was a long way. Okay. Yeah, I think that's important don't, don't, don't as well. I think that's that. right. Okay, cool. Oh, that's good to know. I'll keep that in. PD, how are you feeling, man? Did I did I slam in too much? No, nah, man. I think it was perfect. I think it was okay. like pretty fun to like try it all out. Um, also, it's I think one level deeper than what we're doing on Tractor. So now I kind of understand a lot more what I'm going to be doing on Tractor as well. So it's a lot cooler. Like it gives me like an overall perspective as to what the fuck nice. I'm looking at as well. So it's pretty cool. And guys, I just want to shout out what Prayansh is doing is a great example in how to apply what you're learning, which is he's just got one simple mashup. I, I don't know if it's simple or not, but I'm, I'm assuming it's two tracks. You know? Very simple. <laughs> cool. So um, he's just got one idea and every class he's learning, hopefully he's going to like, you know, apply yeah. that new concept to that one project. And that's absolutely a fine way to go. Like it's, I think it's a good way to go. If anything. Yeah, it's probably easier to go that way because in like every class you learn, like you can just add on to bits and pieces to that one track. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's it. Like I needed to know like all of the effects to what I was doing. Like this weekend, I was like, "Fuck it, only I could like use effects." Ah, yeah, okay. So it was perfect. Like I was nice. like, "Okay, cool." That's good to know. Yeah. Um, sorry, I know we're down on time. Just one last one minute thing I wanted to say is so because we originally started this for like the DJ class, that's why I've been preloading the DJ stuff. So Pranj, I'm thinking maybe only one more class where you need to know how to program a DJ set on Ableton. After that, we may start moving to a little bit of production stuff. So if you still want to join in, feel free, even if you're not interested in making music at the moment, or if you feel like that's good for you for now, enough to practice, that's completely okay as well. So I just wanted to give you that heads up. One more class and then production stuff. Do I need to know how to play any instrument? All right, for production stuff, um, no, I will give you a basic overview of music theory in Ableton and some tools that make it easy for you, even if you don't play an instrument. Yeah, I'm down. I'm like that much. Well. Okay, sick. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Woo. It's all turned on. Oh, my God. Oh, what a beauty. So, wait, Eric, while you're there, can you just show us, like, the simple volume fader, high, mid, low on the console to kind of... Yeah, yeah, for sure. It does so, hold on. You know, the stuff this over. somehow. How do I flip the camera on this motherfucker? There we go. Science. Right. So, EQ on here. So, let's use the, this first bank. So if you just tap on there, it's a little expanded view on there. Yeah. So you've got like the, the breakdowns of the EQ band, so four band. So if I was to just slide that over, you can, you can you know, increase and decrease the quality factor, drop that down mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, so this is like basic EQ. You can also just have like high pass, uh, which you can just sort of like scroll over uh, and things like that. And same for low pass, do the same thing. Um, and yeah, different EQ types, but that's not important. Um, and also you've got your dynamics. So you can have, different, you need to have it. Yeah, so we've got a gate on this side or you can go for like a legacy compressor and then something else on this end as well. Different. And you've got like a DSA, which like localizes the sibilance in the vocal, which is normally around like five to seven K. Yeah. Um, so you can literally just key that in there. I don't know if you can see it. So you can just choose the frequency and then squash the threshold and really make that like fucking work hard. But this is kind of what you would expect. And like, this is the basic format of what you would see in a compressor, essentially. Um, and you, you've got your basic controls as well. So threshold, ratio, out gain, all that other fun stuff. But I, I say all these things, but like it's, and it sounds daunting as fuck, guys. But like once you actually play with it, it's actually legit. Like you, you just listen. But basically, you just, yeah, you know I mean, just listen and then you'll get it. That's it. Hey, man, thank you so much for showing us that. I think it's such a cool way to wrap up the class of showing how it's actually used on the field or on a console. It kind of legitimizes things. So that, that's really great, man. Cheers. No worries, dude. Well, we still need, yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can work out like sending out, sending you those, that, that audio and then we can maybe do something with it. Nice. That sounds good. <laughs> Cheers, guys. All right. Well, have a lovely week, guys. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you. Right. Okay.